adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Now, whether you find yourself in a dungeon most foul, or just kind of sitting around a makeshift table playing liar's dice with your traveling companions, every adventurer needs a good source of light. The problem is, at least when you're LARPing or just trying to set off that, like, fantasy medieval mood, when you bust out some, like, camping lantern, it kind of kills the general vibe you're going for. So for today's episode, I wanted to take like some cheap Amazon lanterns and see if we can make them more like aesthetically in theme. Now, before we get into that, YouTube tells me that like 80% of you who pop by this channel aren't subscribed yet. And as I'm very interested in growing this as big as I can get it, um, you hitting that subscribe button would just be a huge help. Cool, with that out of the way, let's get down to it and level up this skill. So the, the base of this lamp that we decided to go for was this neat little one we got on Amazon for like $25 for four of them. They're a cool little canister shape and they give the option of having a nice bright normal light as well as this neat flickering fire effect. Now if any of you saw our like first LARP adventure video, which you can check out right here, you'll know that Maddie got lost in the woods and can attest that even though having like a flickering ambiance style lamp is cool, having just like a bright one to get you out of the woods is super great. So I really dig that this one has both options in it and it's so cheap. Problem is it's still very modern looking. Like it clearly looks plastic and little handles and fake fittings on it look kind of cheap. If anything, you can maybe pull off steampunk if you like add some gears and squint a little bit, but definitely not something you'd find in the setting that we usually like to play in. Like if you take a look at medieval style lanterns or even the ones that I have hanging up here, all of them seem to have that kind of peaked top to them. It's just a super classic looking design that adds that little like age to it. My initial thought was to actually use some of these post toppers that come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes to kind of glue onto the top here and start giving it that feel. But while I was researching those, Maddie messaged me and was like, yo, for these ones here, you can get four of them for half the price of one of those toppers. Then you just kind of tear off the pieces that you like and stick them on and make it look right. And she was right. A pack of these little Halloween lanterns only cost $10 for four of them. It's a shame to rip them apart too because they're real cute with these little tiny Halloween decorations on them. They're friggin' adorable, but I must do what I must do for art. So I got to ripping them apart. Luckily, the bottom bit was actually designed to come right off. This is how you get to where the batteries go. And inside of this cap piece here is just a little plastic stem, which also rips right out. The thought is to somehow append it to the top of our lantern to start to give us that more classical peak shape we're looking for. First things first though, I wanted to get rid of these metal handles because they just don't really look the part at all. And little tubes of plastic that they seed into really don't do the thing any favors of making it look any less plasticky. But getting rid of those are actually really easy. I just hit them with my belt sander and that sucker milled straight through them completely bringing them down to the surface level. Then it was a simple matter of finishing the job with some 400 grit sandpaper to smooth it all over. You can still see where those little tubes used to be, but once it's all painted over, those are gonna completely disappear, so I'm not too worried about it. Now trying to figure out how to connect these tops to this thing was a little bit of a beast. Like at first I thought I could just glue them together and call it a day, but then I realized the first thing anybody's gonna do when they wanna open it or close it is to grab it by that top and either pull or push it. And at that point, it wouldn't matter what kind of adhesive I use because there's only a, so much surface area here along this ring to actually append it to. It's definitely gonna break off. I also wanted to find a way to mount this metal ring to it just so I'd have a place to hang it or hold it as you walk. But again, that's gonna put a lot of pressure on this thing and I'm afraid it's just gonna pop right off. After an embarrassingly long amount of pondering, like that, honestly, it took me a little bit. I came up with this really good idea though. And it started with this spool of 14 gauge steel wire that I originally got when I made my chain mail. That episode here, in case you're curious. After cutting about a foot of this wire off the spool, I went ahead and folded it directly in half. Then I slid that ring onto the wire so that it sat right where that fold is. Once there, it was an easy matter to just use some pliers and crimp that wire around the ring to make it really strong. Next, I fed the legs of that little assembly through the top portion of my topper here so that the ring sat flush against the peak. And I was really happy with how good that looked. That ring sits snugly across the top and that folded wire just looks like another ring that's appended to it. It looks like it's meant to be there. All right, so next, I unscrewed the top of that little canister lantern, then went ahead and drilled two holes spaced just a couple of inches apart to give a place for those wires to feed through. 
by feeding those wires through those holes and then using some pliers to wrap them as tightly as I could, I was able to form a really strong bond between the two pieces. Then I just simply nipped away any of that excess wire. This gives the whole thing plenty of strength to be held or pulled by that ring without any issue or fear of it coming off. Okay, so we still have a long way to go with this build, but I kind of want to just touch base on how fun something like this is. Like, I feel like we're always trying to build something from scratch, but taking something and then modifying it to be exactly what you want is just a lot of fun. And most things, if you try and you play with it, are actually really, really easy to customize. Speaking of customization, I want y'all to know that I made this cocktail completely custom, and it's freaking delicious. And I was able to do this thanks to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare has thousands of classes, so you're bound to find something you're interested in. Including this little gem I just found called Cocktail Secrets Making Your Signature Drink by Ivy Mix. Which, by the way, is just the best bartender name ever, Ivy Mix. It's like a bartender you'd find in a saloon in a video game or something. Anyways, following her course, I was able to learn how to make my very own cocktail. She went over everything from coming up with the idea of what you want the drink to reflect, to learning how to combine all the different flavors and tie them together to make a cohesive drink, and then finally putting on all those little touches that make it something really special in yours. To make my little concoction here, in case you wanted to try it, I just kind of raided my liquor cabinet and end up using a combination of 1.5 ounces of Curvassier, three quarter ounce of Di Sirono, one ounce of Grand Marnier, half an ounce of simple syrup, and then just the, the orange peel for the oils and the garnish. It starts off with like a, a nice bright orange, mellows out into like an almond kind of flavor, and then finishes off tasting like an orange candy. It is really good. So if you're interested in learning this or any of a thousand other skills, you're in luck. Because the first thousand people to use the link in the description below will get one month free trial to Skillshare. And I have a little challenge for you. I want you to make up what you think would be a good signature cocktail for here on Skilltree, and I'll pick the ones I like best and try them out at the beginning of the episodes. It'll be fun to see what you guys come up with. Anyways, back to the project. From here, I just busted out some of this quick seal caulking and used it to make the top look like it was actually part of the rest of the lantern there. This stuff is great. It's not only going to hide that space, but it also acts as an adhesive that's gonna stop that top section from wiggling or moving around at all. By wetting my finger a little bit, I was able to smooth everything over and get it to look really clean. Now, as I mentioned in passing before, in order to make something like this look more cohesive, I'm gonna be painting it all one color. My first thought was to just go kind of willy-nilly with some spray paint and get it all done kind of quickly. But then I realized if I did that, like a lot of overspray was gonna get onto this clear, like the glass bit right here. It's plastic, but you know what I mean. And I wouldn't be able to get into the little nooks and crannies here without getting it again on the glass bit. So instead, I started opening this thing up to see if it was easy to take apart. On the underside where the batteries live, there was just these four screws holding everything into place. After removing that, I saw that there was only one other screw that I had access to. This turned out to be just one long center bolt that held the entire thing together. And with that removed, the top came right off and that whole transparent casing slid right out. Now I was surprised to find the LED configuration inside was just this kind of cylinder of solid lights that flashed. And I was confused at first because the whole thing has like a flickering flame effect. So I was kind of curious at how it made that with just kind of a flashing on and off light. But then I realized it's actually caused by this little plastic insert ring that's inside of that clear housing. It actually distorts the light to give it that little bit of a wavy look and help it sell the fire effect. Knowing that you could probably just grab those little inserts out of these cheap things and make anything have that kind of effect. That's really cool. Oh, that's another fun thing about ripping stuff apart like this because by seeing how it works, you can then use it for other ideas and make other cool stuff. Love that stuff, so cool. But now with all of those guts out, we're just left with this kind of empty shell here that we can paint. Before painting, I first hit the entire thing with some sandpaper just to give it a bit more grit for the paint to hold on to. Then I busted out some of this black gesso paint to act as my primer coat. This stuff goes on super thick and has some amazing coverage. It's gonna give me a great base coat for my next layer of paint to adhere to. For that next layer, I decided to use some of this copper metallic paint. This is the cheap stuff from Michaels, but honestly, it's a really convincing metallic look. And I kinda wanna make sure you can see those brush strokes through the entire piece. Like, I want you to be able to see some of the black paint through it because it's gonna add a little bit of depth, but also if you look at like a worked piece of metal, it has a grain to it. It has that kind of 
everything going in one direction vibe. So in order to make sure I'm doing that, I just took my brush and made sure as neatly as possible I had everything going in the same direction. Then once dried, I went back in with some sandpaper and just knocked it down even further to let more of that black show through. This is going to give it a lot more depth and add some age to the whole thing. And with that paint done, this thing looks way more cohesive, like that top was always meant to be there. Happy with that, I just hit the entire thing with a clear coat so that my acrylic paint didn't melt off the first time this thing was exposed to moisture. Now for another small detail, I wanted the glass, the glass around that thing to have like little bars or something. Again, if you look at some old school style lanterns, the bottom and the top are connected together with some kind of a bar or wire or something. So I, I wanted something to mimic that effect at least a little bit. So to do that, I just hit some of the little ridges that are actually on that plastic with some sandpaper. Then just went back in with a Sharpie and colored in that roughened plastic. The roughness helps that Sharpie stick so it doesn't like rub off with use. And the effect is super subtle, but honestly to me, some of those more subtle effects is what kind of tricks your brain to thinking it's really true. With that all good, I simply put this entire thing back together and BAM! Check this thing out! It's looking really slick. I love how much it just looks like a copper canister lantern. Almost like something you'd see at a, at a bazaar of some sort. Really cool look to me. For just one more little, wow, one little embellishment to add an extra flair to it, I grabbed some of this jute cordage and just wrapped it all around the base. But I want to mill out a bunch of them for a LARP, so I wanted this to be kind of as easy and approachable as possible. And I love how cool this thing looks. Like, couldn't you just picture this hanging from your tent or maybe just above an overturned whiskey barrel that you're playing cards with? Such a vibe. I love this thing. But wait, there's more. Do you remember these Halloween lanterns I grabbed so that I can rip them asunder to use their bits and pieces for a Frankenstein lantern? Well, I felt bad because they're already really cool. Like, they look kind of neat. And if it wasn't for their Halloween theming, like, look at it. Even with the, the little light on, it's got a warm glow and a tiny little candle flicker. And honestly, for like a way easier build than doing this one, I bet we can take this and make it so it isn't Halloween themed. It's something we'd want to actually have at a LARP of some sort. And since the real problem is only the glass or the picture on the other side of the glass, I decided we'd start by taking those things out. To get them out, I started by trying to pry off the bottom. And even though I was able to get through that first layer where all the electronics live, the rest of it just did not want to come out. But after fiddling for a little bit, I realized that the top was only disguised by this little ring here. It was actually just held on by a few clips. Once those were opened up, that whole inner cavity was exposed and those little pieces of glass came right out. I was surprised by the way to find that these are in fact real glass, like very, very thin glass, but they're real glass. Now to remove the image on them, I just busted out a sharp chisel and scraped away all of the paint on the back side. These are great for like two of them. The other six completely shattered in my hands. No matter how careful I was, they were just too thin and delicate and, and broke every time. I was frustrated, but honestly, that works out because I would rather them break here than be out having fun somewhere and have little shards of glass flying around. Luckily, I just so happened to have this little scrap piece of plexiglass lying around. It's really rough from just kind of laying on my floor in the back here unused, but it'll serve our purpose perfectly. All I had to do is bring it over to my bandsaw and I was able to duplicate the same size and shape as the pieces of glass that I took out. These I just hit with this frosted glass spray paint. This stuff is great as it lets the light still come through but it gives it that frosted glass appearance. Like look at it, this looks so good now. You can't see the cheaper little fake candle inside but it has that nice warm glow we're looking for and that little tiny candle flicker is just so damn cute. I mean look at it, so damn cute. Now the battery cover here did have that little protrusion on it where the, the bottom used to stick into place. And that I was able to remove with my belt sander. But had I actually looked in the box that these came in, I would have found that they provided one that was already completely flat. They expected that you might not want it to hang like this and you'd want it to sit flat. So they gave you those. For $10, these are actually really good. They're cool little things. But look at these two. These were super cheap, really easy to make, and so much fun. Which is great because, again, I wanted to make a bunch of these for when we go to Reckoning this year. Which, by the way, tickets for that are on sale. If you want to come LARP with us for some reason this year, uh, definitely check that out. Link in the description below. And if you do give something like this a try, I really hope you send us some pictures so we can see how you approached it. Also, if there's any other kind of cool embellishment you think I can do with this, leave it in the comment section below. I'd love to see what you come up with. One last thing. We are nearing the end of level two of our Level Up LARP competition. In case you're new here and not sure what I'm talking about, you can check out this video here that explains it. 
But in a nutshell, we partnered with Bergsnyder, purveyor of fine medieval clothing and accessories, to host a competition where one of you will win a trip to come with us to Germany to the world's largest LARP event in the world, Conquest. So yeah, make sure you check that out and join in on the fun. Now I hope you liked this project. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love. And again, don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. And hit the notification thing, if that still works. YouTube's weird. In the meantime though, Keep leveling up, you. You've made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It is a great way to support this channel. Another great way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are my patrons, and honestly, we couldn't do any of this without them. An extra special shout out to our newest high tier level Patreon members, Sir Spangy and Ash Kartoa. Again, without our Patreon members, none of this is possible. We wouldn't be able to do all the fun stuff we do here. So from the bottom of my heart, I really thank you. If you like what we do here and want to support us, consider joining our Patreon. Link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos here that YouTube thinks you like, and that helps support us too. Well, you decide which one you want. I'm going to make another of these. This is real good. Cheers.